That's my good buddy, Dr. Drew, over there. Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. New right. fax number, 310. Don't remember the rest. 840-4051. See? See, when you don't smoke weed, kids, you see what happens? You spit out fax numbers like they're going out of style. All right, Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, our guest is the love that the two hosts find between each other. But coming up, Jennifer Blank from uh, Dark Angel. Is she uh, the... Is she the- I have no idea. I I don't know. Probably not. We don't get the leads. I think uh, she may work craft service. Ah, got it. Okay. That's good. Uh, We get uh, Anderson Cooper, who's the uh, host of the Mole, XFL uh, cheerleaders. Well, that'll be a good time. And uh, our good buddy, Jeremy McGrath, the uh, super, super bowl of motocross man. Now that he's taken your 1-800-collect job. Oh, yes. That son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) He's getting all my phone money. All righty. Ready to go here, Drew? Brooke? Yes. You're 19. What's up? Um. Well, I've been with like 11 <laughs> different people. Mm-hmm. And I know that's a lot in like only 19 years, but yeah. every single one of them, not or rather not any of them, can get me to an orgasm. None of them. That that would be normal for a 19 year old. Well, <laughs> through intercourse maybe, but through oral sex, you may have squeezed one off by oh, now. Yeah, yeah, oral, but any other way now. Okay. But you may never get any any other way. Well, <laughs> is there something that can be done about that, or is this just something I have to deal with for the rest of my life? Well, why is that important to you? I mean, like, what's the big deal? Like, I, I can't really... I don't what really, is the big deal? That's the that's question. What I'm, I'm, that's what I want to know. That's, like, the whole point. Like, I don't understand what the big deal is. Like, you don't like sex, are you saying? No, well, it's not that I don't like it. I just, I'm tired of having to do it myself all the time. Well, how do you do it yourself? Do I have to go into detail about that? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, oh God, don't talk about this anyway. Um, I just kind of, I just kind of rub, like mm-hmm. up at you know, like around the clitoris. I see. Area. Yeah. Where's that? Near the anus? No. Where's that, Drew? Near chin. Near the chin. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Mental note: clitoris near chin. No. Uh, all right. <laughs> and uh, all right, so you you rub it around, and if a guy rubs it around, you'll get the orgasm. Uh, not really. All right, but if he performs oral sex on you, you'll yeah. have the orgasm. Yeah. All right, well, you know, at 19, squeezing off an orgasm via oral sex, you're marginally ahead of the game. Marginally ahead of your pe- peers. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, not just the game, but I mean, the peers. You're doing better than most. Oh, okay. And then well. to have it during intercourse, you but ahead of the game suggests something like with the game with herself. Yeah. You know it does? Saying? No, only to you. I mean, you're... Above the fifty percentile is what I'm saying. Right, you're a little, you're a little head of the game. No matter how old you are, but especially the nineteen year olds. Yeah, and this is as good as it gets for. Would you say most? For most, yeah. But time is on your side, and if you find the right man, and uh, as you mature a little bit, it's maybe something that'll happen down. And the you road. might find if you actually get in a relationship where you really care about somebody. This... Well, yeah, I am now, but like he feels bad. It makes him feel, it's like, oh, he just whines. Does he give oh. you an orgasm every time with the oral sex? No. Why not? I don't, because I don't ask. I get bored. You get because bored with... Like, <sighs> when, you know, I was yeah. thinking about this today. You know, men, Jesus. men, you know, Hold when... Is, I, I can't stand women like Brooke, you know. Oh, oh, thanks. Well, <laughs> you're getting bored with oral sex? No, I'm not getting bored with oral sex. I just don't demand it every time. It's like, after he's done, I'm just like, whatever, get off me. <laughs> all, right. all right, baby. Well, uh, have a good have a good time out there with the lads. All right. But I was thinking about that. We, well, you and I have talked about a few times about how women can sort of take Hold it. Hold on. You it. wonder why she's not having an orgasm? It's like I get bored. Like when he's done, I'm like, Shh, get off me. She's not you, involved. You ain't going to have an orgasm yeah. for at least 150 years. She's not involved. Timothy in. McVeigh is going to be out of prison. Before your next orgasm, you're not. She's not into any of the guys she's with. That's the big problem. But you know, I've talked in the past. She's about, not into any guys. But how, how women are, can kind of take it or leave it, the orgasm part, sometimes, or, or even yes. sometimes go to the point nearly go. Ah, nah, can't do it. That, okay. I love that. And I thought that for a guy, it's like when the train is leaving the station, it, it, it's leaving the station. You know, once the locomotive hits, you know, hits the track. When the Chattanooga, Chattanooga <laughs> choo 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 is leaving the penis station. It's got to be going. It's got to reach its destination. Yeah, yeah. 
you wouldn't uh, stop. It's a freight locomotive. Right. But I don't know what your point is as it regards well, to this Well, she's call. sort of like, yeah, I don't ask for it. Sometimes I want it. Sometimes I don't know, whatever. It's, you know. All right. Now, listen, I don't care about her. Al? Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Uh, well, my friend told me that I have this special talent. And um, you see, I can uh, I can make myself shoot without um, touching myself. Right. You just got to have uh, another guy's ass wrapped around your penis. Uh, not that. No? Okay. No, I, don't, I no, really don't have trick. anything around my penis. I see. No contact. No contact. And how do you do this, then? Do you bend spoons and things, too, with your... Rhythm? I think about sex. You just think about sex. And are you on your back, or are you standing up? I'm on my back. Uh-huh. I'm laying down on my bed. Do you have an erection, or does semen just spring forth? You have an erection, right? Yes. And you're on your back. Yes. Oh, two hands free for the magazine, and you just lie there thinking about sex. I just think about sex. I don't look at porn. I don't masturbate. Yeah. I talk about sex a lot, and I don't believe in sex before marriage. I see. But uh, I ejaculate. Now, you're the kind of guy who'd be all right in prison. You know, you know what I mean? No porn, no women, no nothing, no hands, just uh, handcuffed, shackled behind the back. He's really like a Goudini. Goudini. Put him in a straight jacket. He's still Spoudini. Spoudini. Yeah. Sorry, Spoudini. He put him in a straight. Ja- oh my God, that that is my porn name, Spoudini. Yes, oh. write that down, Drew. That is my new porn name. I I got to get into porn now just to use the name Spoudini. Have myself uh, one of those Frenchman's pencil and mustaches. Wear a cape and a top hat. Spoudini has arrived, ladies. I like that. Watch his magic wand. Watch him pull some semen out of his penis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I flex it a little bit. Right. Right. And, and you don't. And how long does this take, Spudini? It usually takes about an hour <laughs> to an hour and a half. Well, listen. A lot of flexing. Yeah, I theoretically could coax some semen out of my penis without contact in an hour or an hour and a half. I don't know the answer to that question, and uh, God willing, I'll never find out. No. <laughs> It's All like, right. listen, I, I might be able to, to start a stopped watch if I stared at it for an hour and a half. I don't know the answer to that. But you know what? You're not going to spend that hour doing it. No, just wind it. Yeah. Take it, oh. drop it off at the mall. <laughs> yeah, right, Alan. And, and Alan, let me tell you, while this is sort of a unique gift, I don't think it's going to pay big dividends with the ladies. I mean, the fact that you can have an orgasm without well, any contact is not a great sign. He's kind of doing Kegel exercises while he's building right. this, and so he might get some benefit out of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, yeah, the thing is, I, I used to masturbate a lot. I see. No kidding. Are you, are you, have Shocked. you ever been with a woman? Uh, no. I, I mean, see. I've made out with chicks, but. What happens to your penis then? It, it erects. I see. Let me write that down. Sometimes I get blue balled, but. Uh-huh. But nothing comes out. Nothing really comes out. It usually comes out when... All right, I've had enough. All right. Thank you. All right, Spudini. Yeah. Spudini's going to do his uh, famous uh, water tank trick where he's uh, shackled, hung upside down in front of a horrified audience and has an an ejaculation while suspended underwater. 500-gallon tank. Rick? How you doing? Hey, you're 32. What's up? Yes, sir. Um... Adam, I'd like to say, first of all, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, the man show kicks ass. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is for Dr. Drew. Yeah, what's up, Ray? Um, also a big fan of yours. Um, back in 94, uh, me and a friend of mine, we, we, you know, I was in there some karate you know, a little bit, and I had misjudged uh, a kick that he had did, and um, I had got kicked <laughs> really did. hard in the nuts. Funny already. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it, it wasn't funny at the time. Right. All right. And what's the question? Well, after it had happened, probably about, you know, maybe six hours later, it got, my the sack got so swollen and it hurt so bad that uh, I should have went to the doctors, but I didn't. No kidding. And after the next couple of days, it had turned different colors, like blue and black being bruised, but I mean, it was swollen. All right. What's the question? I could, not, I could not walk. Question is... Um, Dr. Drew, what kind of permanent damage that it could do? All right, I'm going to put him on hold because his line is bad, and Drew, you tell him what's wrong well, with this sack. Can, the, the testes can be permanently destroyed, frankly, by this. Are you lucky you didn't get uh, more serious intra-abdominal problems? 
All right, but what about his chances uh, for having kids? Uh, that It's hard to predict. You'd have to get a sperm count to see. If, if he's producing sperm, he's producing sperm. It should be fine. But there's no way to know whether or not that kick actually had an influence unless he has a, have a sperm count. Done. Well, how would it influence it? Some it scar could, tissue or something? That, or, you know, spermatoceles, cystoceles can form, and or it can just shut the testes down. I mean, fracture them, kill them. It can, it can smush them. I mean, they can... Yeah, like, be, like dropping your computer? A little bit of that, and or the blood supply can be impaired. It can be a real mess. But it's probably all right with the sperm. Probably. All right. Let's, uh, I want to talk to Blair. The right. truth. We've done nothing but talk to guys, right? right? Well, one girl. Blair? Yes? You're 19. What's up? I'm 19. Well, I just moved into this new place about a month ago, and me and my two lesbian roommates got really drunk one night. Are you lesbian, too? No, I'm bisexual. Hmm. Nice. So, anyways, I got drunk, they got drunk, and things sort of happened, and we had a threesome. The problem is, I'm now single, and they both have girlfriends, and I was kind of hoping to maybe, you know, be more sexual with them, but it's not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. And we can't talk about it very... Why? I mean, we don't communicate with each other very well. Why? I'm not really sure. Like, I'm perfectly fine about it, but I think it's the fact that they both have girlfriends, that they don't want to talk to me about it. I mean, even when it's just us three alone in the house, yeah, it's like they don't want to... Well, maybe it's because they know... Are you into both of them or, or just one of them? Well, I kind of like both of them. I mean, it wow. was like... You're easy. How'd this threesome go? It was pretty good, actually. What? How'd it work? How did it work? Yeah. Well, three girls pleasuring uh -huh. each other, uh -huh. I guess. Did you guys uh, make a the devil's triangle? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, Spudini uh, enjoys the Devil's Triangle. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. I mean, it's not like I want to have a relationship or anything. I just really like sex. Uh -huh. so, hmm. But you know. might be destroying their relationships. Yeah, and they're hey, listen. They don't want it with you. That's why it's freaking them out. Yeah. If, if they wanted it with you, they would have brought it up. Uh huh. You, well, you know what like, I'm saying? No, it's not just that. The whole sexual thing. Like we have problems communicating now, anyways. Well, about what? Just anything. I mean... Because I, of this threesome you had? Yes. I mean, before that, we were, like, best of friends. I mean, we had well, talked about it before. But, well, listen, whenever you're good friends yeah. and something physical... I remember when I was... Uh, oh, you and Stu. No, not Stu. When oh. I was uh, living out in uh, La Crescenta with uh, Ralph and Cordy. Uh-oh. Yeah, we all, you know, uh. we blew each other one night, you know couple of beers you know how it is weekend nothing going you on told me a different story about made that, it though. uh anal sex yeah we all got yeah. it on pretty good right well, and uh you know it caused it was a, there's a little tension in the house i gotta admit you know for a couple of couple of I weeks was friends with before and we're now completely fine i see it's just the whole thing that it's with my roommates that really kind of gets but me, listen you know? you, you, obviously you were sort of okay with this it didn't affect you emotionally but most people are sort of s s surprised by the amount of feeling that's generated from this kind of an encounter. And your roommates are no exception. Mm -hmm. They're confused about their current relationships. They've got boundary issues with their roommate now who's sort of on to them. And well, clearly would hurt your feelings if they said no. I mean, a lot of conflict here. Mm -hmm. But all here's my theory. You I are noticing the cold sho shoulder more because you're the odd woman out now. Mm -hmm. These two are busy in new relationships, enjoying themselves, and they're probably, quite frankly, not even thinking about you. Yeah, well, they, but they're also, probably aware that she's into it and don't want to hurt her feelings. I, I bet. You know what it's like when you're in a new relationship? Uh, uh -huh. Everything else could just sort of be damned. You yeah, know, but, but the thing is, I've had other, you know, sexual experiences after that. It's like this happened like a month and a half ago. And it's yeah, well, how, getting... But these relationships are brand new for them, right? Well, pretty much. All right. And they're just into that. And they're probably not paying a lot of attention to you. Mm -hmm. And you're like some old boyfriend or some old girlfriend that they don't really want to bring up, especially when they're in the thralls of their new relationship. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't read as much into it as you're, as you're doing it. I mean, if you guys can't communicate, well, then maybe you should sit down and talk about it. I think she's into these two. Oh, yeah. These two are not paying attention to her because they're into their own ass. Mm -hmm. And she's feeling like there's all this tension. Right. Meanwhile, they're just out having a good time. They're probably not feeling it. Right. That's me theory. Scott? Yeah. You're 21. Yeah. What's up? Uh, I think, uh, I guess this is kind of geared towards Dr. Drew, just from a uh, physician's background. But... Uh, Basically, I, I I think, or I guess I, I worry that I might have a, a condition known as Peroni's disease. Why? Uh, 
Well, you know, obviously I, that's not the kind of word you hear a lot being passed around, but I overheard my dad uh, on the phone with his doctor. Oof. And basically... Well, older guys get peronis more easily than a guy at 21. You sure, he right. wasn't, you sure he wasn't ordering a pizza? <laughs> could have been, I had that happen with Pe my dad. Pe peronis? Yeah, just, I, I was drunk. I heard him ordering a pizza. I thought he said peronis. I went into a panic. <laughs> and so what's the deal? <laughs> well, basically, uh, later on, he, he kind of... He kind of mentioned to me that uh, that he had gotten this diagnosis from his doctor, and he, he mentioned some of the symptoms, and he, he was kind of just... Uh, well, here's the deal with Peronis. It just, it's a bent penis, but the, it, the significance starts to develop when there's problem with function, erectile dysfunction, okay. ejaculatory dysfunction, painful erection, that kind of thing. Yeah. And at your age, it's normal to have some curve, and uh, 800 units of vitamin D will help take that curve away a little you, bit. Uh, you come and... Vitamin E, rather. You come and it hits you in the ass. That's that's your first <laughs> indication. There's a problem. Yeah, hey. I guess I guess some of it might be rooted uh, in the fact that I haven't really been with a woman yet. So yeah. Probably Ooh. some insecurity. Oh, the great Spudini is not uh, <laughs> feels uh, uh, gives his regards to your penis, your bent penis. Yeah. Hey, uh, Drew. Yeah. In order to diagnose Peronis, doesn't one have to get an erection? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's who's, a good who's examining that? That's interesting. You know what I would do if I was a doctor? I would say, listen. Sometimes you can feel the plaques. Here's a uh, here's a pad. Here's a uh, Draw here's it. a steno pad. Mm -hmm. Go get an erection. Trace it. Set it down on here, like what kids do when they draw their hand on a piece yeah. of paper and make it into a turkey. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Don't put a hat or a face on it or anything. Just. Drop it down on the steno pad and draw a nice outline around it, and then hand it back to me. Nice. Uh, your nuts start here. I would draw an arrow down to the edge you of the. You were here. <laughs> yes, you are here. Because Drew, is there is do do doctors have to examine erect penises? I, I've never had to. I must admit, and uh, although I've never made, but there's certain things that you might have to. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh, bad times. Well, actually, I had a guy, bad bad I had a guy times. that was shot through the penis when I was a resident. Yeah, and that was got all swelled up because <laughs> oh. the blood went in, didn't come out. Oh. Yeah, that hurt yours, huh, Scott? Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're fine, buddy. Take uh, that vitamin E. Oh, so that's uh, it. It seems. Listen, know, listen. Why haven't you been laid yet? You're 21. Uh, well, actually, I, I just broke up with a girl. Uh, well, that explains it. Yeah, and and. Probably the last thing we did before we broke up was, uh, I mean, there were other circumstances, but it was basically, you know, we got to a certain point where we were making out, and, you know, we, uh, I guess, ground, or she gro uh, grind on me, or whatever the past tense is, and, uh, yeah, I guess... All right. Oh, oh man. Scott, listen. That was the most uh, meandering answer I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, that's no answer. Well, Why haven't you got laid? Because uh, my last girlfriend dry humped me. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, well that's we, rough. Just before we broke up, and we broke up, but it was... Uh, please. Listen, Scott, you're 21. You sound like you're in the eighth grade. What's going on? Well, I guess my main concern with the with the condition is just if no, uh, the physics you, work out. Listen. I mean, stop. Stop. Stop with it. You don't have Peronis. I don't? Even Do you if have you, a painful you, erection? No, no. Can I'm you ejaculate? Oh, yeah. You don't have Peronis. Good. Okay. Now, here's the part we're worried about. You spending all your time focusing on your penis, which isn't <laughs> broke, and not having sex. Right. What are you? You're a good student, right? Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a side effect, I guess. Yeah, you go to a regular school and everything? Yeah, UT. Yeah, I didn't smell junior college on this one here. <laughs> I smelt. Uh, I smelt some. I smelt some uh, scholastic ability. You were, but you know, they, Scott. You need. They, they have a history in that town of people climbing into clock towers. I'm a little bit worried yeah, about. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, hey, don't shoot the freshman class. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, in one way or the other. All right, listen, buddy. You need to put on them uh, cowboy boots and uh, down yourself a few uh, tall boys and go out and uh, have a good time. Do you hear me? Sounds good. Stop focusing on your penis and stop studying so hard. All right. All right. right. There you go. Hey, and always tell a guy he gets good grades. He had, it's it's so funny, guys like Scott, they, 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 their, their minds are very capable, so they devise these brilliant strategies schemes. and defenses and yeah. schemes as to why they haven't really done yeah. anything. Oh, I wish I had a videotape. I got Peronis and a girl who uh, ground my leg. I wish I had a videotape myself when I was 19. Really? Me too. I would have made, I'd sell it to hard copy. Scott would have looked like uh, Spudini, <laughs> compared, compared to me. <laughs> He would have looked like Carlos the Bachelor from The Flying Nun. <laughs> Spudini. Oh, that's my new name. I from the, from this day forth, I I will will respond to nothing but Spudini.
<laughs> if I hear the word Adam, Mr. Corolla, Ace, I will not even turn around. Spoudini or the Spoudent one? <laughs> all right, Brian, what's up? You're 15. Hey, hey. Um, first of all, I praise the great Spoudini. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my child. Oh, yeah. I worship Spoudini. Thank you. And uh, my problem is, like, uh, it's for both of you, actually. My girlfriend, she masturbates, like, a lot, mm-hmm. like four or five times a day. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, like, what's normal and how to confront her. Well, normal is at a level that doesn't cause consequence. In other words, doesn't interfere with her, doesn't cause her to harm herself, doesn't get in the way of your relationship or her school function, and isn't a problem to her. If, okay. it, if it, however, it's something that she has to do where she sexualizes everything and she has to use sex to manage her feeling state in the moment, and or it becomes escalating to the point that there are mounting consequences, then that's a problem. Okay. And Man, the, the, it doesn't really affect look, all Ryan, that much. Basically, there, there are two ways to real sexual, th- three ways to real sexual compulsivity. One is you're an addict, and it's part of your addictive process. Two, you're bipolar and manic. And three is you have a history of sexual abuse. Fourth is falling under the spell of the great Spudini. There could be a trifecta at that point. Uh, all right. Well, what would count as, <clears throat> like, interfering? Well, uh, you're calling this radio station, so there's a problem in this relationship. And that, yeah. that's a high degree of suspicion, then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, and, or, were any of these things that Drew mentioned, do they do they match her? Uh, not really. They don't really interfere all that much. It's <laughs> That's not, no, 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 no. I mean, any of these scenarios, like a sexual abuse or anything History like of addiction, that. anything like that. Uh, not that I know of, no. I mean, you might explore that with her, because that's what it sounds like. Okay, I'll ask her. All, all right, right, Brian. Okay. All right. If she says yes, run out screaming and holding your ears and uh, singing the... Uh, uh, reciting Na- the Pledge of Allegiance. National Anthem, yeah. National okay. Anthem will work, too. You know what? Mm. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Becky. Becky's mm-hmm. 25. Mm-hmm. No, don't like her, huh? Oh, yeah. We will uh, <laughs> speak to Becky. Ooh, with a very, uh, very titillating surprise question after this. Love line. I'm the great Spudini. That is my... Uh, Accomplice in crime, Dr. Drew over there, my assistant, if you will. Yeah, I was saying, at this point, I'd be your assistant. And, and Spudini Escape, please. Or accomplice. Or, or, or sort of a. Uh, what's the word for somebody who's studying under you? Uh, it's my, uh, m- my ward. Yeah, your ward, <laughs> exactly. My uh, student. Yeah. Listen, uh, your, your job is to stand there and look, look pretty and help the great Spudini. A little less talking. Becky? Uh huh. You're 25. Yeah. What's up? Well, I have a question about. Like yesterday, I was went to see a doctor because I'm like tired all the time. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I have a question. Well, first of all, I actually, want to tell you that Doctor Drew, I think you're sexy. Thanks, Becky. And Adam, I love you, and I hate you at the same time. Who's, who's Adam? <laughs> I, I mean, Adam. I, I don't know of this Adam. I've heard the name before, but I don't know the man. It's a personally. faint. No, wait, it's a faint memory for me now. Yeah, Spudini does not recognize any other day, name, uh, but Spudini. I'm sorry. Spudini. And the salty one. I love you, and I hate you at the same time. Thank you. But anyway, so um, I want to know, like, if, because I'm, like, tired all the time, and they think that I may have sleep apnea. Hmm. Are you overweight? Um, I weigh about 170. I'm 5'5". Five five. No, mm. hold on. The uh, great Spadini is going to do his radio math. 5'5", five five, 170, carry 3, divide by 2. That is 5'3", uh, and, a, and a quarter, 182. Do you uh, snore? Yes, I, I, my husband sleeps on the couch. Because you snore so loud? <laughs> yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. That could be it. There you so go. So that's good. You can have a sleep study done? Yeah. Excellent. I'm scheduled to go in March to have one done. Excellent. But, March? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's like a long ways away. Oh, my God. This, our medical system's just... Well, what do you like want? Canada. What do you pay? Five bucks a year in taxes? The Listen. Tax, I don't know. What, I don't know. I actually don't have to pay for it, so... That's what I'm saying. But, Becky, in the sleep study, you, you go there and you stay for... Yeah, not that they wire you with brain waves. Heart. Right, but do you, do you go for a couple of nights? One or night. One night. Video. It's all it takes. Mm-hmm. But, because um, they've also asked me if I'm, like, depressed. Which is the other thing that'll give you fatigue like that. But what, I mean, what are, like, signs of, like, severe depression? It's hard to tell when you're I mean, in it. Yeah. It's well, very hard. Well... No, it's not. Low energy. Low energy Let is me tell you what depression is, because uh, the great Spudini has been depressed uh, the better part of his adult life. You have difficulty. You, you were just spoo at that point. You have difficulty getting out of bed in the morning. You have difficulty finding enjoyment in, in anything in, in things that you should find enjoyment. Things that used to be enjoyable. You withdraw a little bit. You stay home. Basically, my life. Well, the the um, 
The hallmark is uh, lack of enjoyment of previously enjoyable activities, irritability, frequent tears, guilt, worthlessness, thoughts of suicide, thoughts of... Uh, Yes. To me, I, I could really put it, I could encapsulate it by saying when the alarm goes off in the morning, you lie there and think about what's ahead of you and you don't want to do it. Well, sometimes people have a lot of anxiety and panic with depression. So they sit up all night with their mind buzzing and they get right out of bed. Right. But see, so, my problem is, is I just I feel like I have no energy. Yeah. Well, get well the, the sleep yeah. study is a great place to start, but you may be depressed also. Well, it could be both. It could be both. And, or the, and the sleep lack problem. Of, lack yeah. of sleep will uh, make you depressed. That's true. Give you fi Fibromyalgia is also another outcome. It'd be interesting if she, if she had aches and pains, too. Yeah. Want to ask her? Just no. Ask. Come on. Oh, for Christ. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a soft touch. Becky? Uh-huh. You yeah. have a lot of fibromyalgia type symptoms, too? What's fibromyalgia? Aches, aches and pains and joints are? No. no. Okay. All right. But listen, you're you're overweight and you're you're Snoring. you're tired and you're snoring. How about how about getting some exercise and drinking a lot of water? Well, I that's I do exercise though. All right. How about drinking a lot of water, I'll taking a lot of water, taking walks and listen to classical music? But and I also have a question. No, for no, no, no. That's enough. <laughs> Johnny? Yeah. You're 28. Yeah. What's happening? Well, I'm having problems using my orbital sander too much. On your groin? Yeah. You got a random orbital sander? Yeah, it's got... What kind? It's a DeWalt. Yeah? Is it the hook and loop kind or the adhesive back kind? No, the hook and loop. Nice. Yeah, and it's... Home Depot? Yeah, and it's got 15,000 OPMs. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so what do you want, Jack? Well, it keeps, keeps rubbing pardon? it raw all the time, and it don't take very long. You're uh, you're masturbating with your the use of your random orbital sander. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Now, what what grit sandpaper are you using? No, I take the sandpaper off. Nice. And well, why don't you use use a pad sander? Use a finish sander. All those do is vibrate. The random orbital sander spins around. That'll tear your junk right up. No, it's orbital. It's or it orbits. But yeah, it, I I know I I know, but it has a rotating action to it that's not great on the junk. Right. The pad sander, the finish sander, simply vibrates. Much better on the dork. Okay. <laughs> you understand, Johnny? Uh-huh. And you can pick them up cheap now. Well, oh, Spudini yeah. has a line of uh, tools. Sp Spudini has a line of junk-related finishing tools. Just uh, go down to the local home center, and for uh, 43 44 bucks, you get yourself a nice pad sander. And the pad sander, too, a lot of them have a nice velvet bottom on it. Very nice on the junk. All right. Wonderful. All right there, Johnny. Good times. I tell you, I think the random orbital sander is the best breakthrough in a tool in the last 10 years. Why? Uh, I don't want to... I get into details, but I, get, I, I, would, I would get fired. Right. But I could do 10 minutes on why this is the greatest tool in the last 10 years. Okay. Owen, I'll tell you during the yeah. break, though, Drew. Oh, thank you. Owen, you're uh, 16. Yeah, what's up, Adam? Yeah, you want to know what uh, kind of wuss my partner is? He says to me, uh, his kids are entered in this uh, pine box derby thing, which is basically these little cars that you do in uh, Cub Scouts. You coast them down a ramp, and uh, whoever wins feels good about themselves for a very short period of time. Drew says, uh, hey, Drew does not own a tool. He wants to come to my house because my house is chock full of tools, and he wants to essentially take over. Pimp the kids out to me for an afternoon. Have me build these things. Well, you offered that. that. That's where I, that's, I'd love to go there. But. Yeah, so what's he say? He casually, I say, yeah, sure, no problem. He says, uh, well, uh, how about Sunday? <laughs> Drew, Sunday's the Super Bowl. Oh. You retard. <laughs> like, I'm going to spend all Sunday in the garage with your oh, kids. Oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you for offering Oh, that. my God. You didn't even know Sunday was the Super Bowl. No, I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Why I, did you ask to do it on because Sunday? Because I was obs obsessing about when the hell I was going to get these things done. Oh, my God. Listen, leave those kids alone. You're going you're gonna to give them both eating disorders. Owen? You're 16. What's up, Houdini? You're the man. Spoudini. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, I go to like a real small private school in Orange County. Mm hmm And it doesn't really have a lot of hot girls there, you know? Right. Does it have the word crest or pine or mountain or ridge in it? No. Hmm. Is it a new school? No, it's pretty, it's 25 years old. Okay. What's it called? Uh, St. Margaret's. Oh, I see. Well, it's a religious yeah. school. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, I'm not a real attractive guy either. I'm, I'm real tall, real skinny. And lately, I've been having these feelings for this other guy in my grade. 
He, yeah, I don't know about this call already. I don't either, because yeah. why would he say the name yeah. of the school? Yeah. No, he's, the great Spudini is... That's the name of the school. Yeah, but now you're describing yourself. We don't know if it's you. You maybe try to embarrass somebody else. Yeah. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know you're so full of crap, no, Owen. <laughs> Why would you describe yourself physically, say the name of your school? I did ask the name of your school, granted. But you shouldn't give that up, give up your physical description, and say that you're having homosexual feelings for one of the other boys in your that, small that, school. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Oh, come on. See? Sorry. Yeah. That's Sorry. all right, though. Sorry, we, we like Owen. Orange County. We appreciate it. All right. All all right. right. One second. Uh, no. No. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. <laughs> True, you're very sharp. Mark? Yeah. You're 25. Yeah. yeah, I was a little tipped off when he said I'm not very attractive. Most guys think they're hot for some unknown reason. Mark, you're 25. What's going well, on? Well, he gave up the name of the school too easily, too. Right. Um, I'm, I've been on chemotherapy for about a year, mm -hmm. and I've been wondering um, if that could make me sterile or not. What what's your kind of cancer do you have? Um, Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And what's the chemo? Um, I started off on chlorambasol, uh -huh. and then I'm, I'm on Flodara right now. Uh -huh. And then he's talking about maybe if it, my lymph nodes are going down, but not as fast as he wants them to. Uh -huh. So he's talking about maybe going on antibodies, too. Uh -huh. And we have one child already, but we've been kind of talking, you know, um, that maybe it isn't such a good idea to to try to have another one because maybe of dirt birth defects or something, you know. I don't know of any of those causing birth defects, but some chemo will suppress your sperm count, so you can't yeah. get conceived. But you should talk to your oncologist about this. Do you know what yeah. kind of cell type you have, lymphoma? Oh, uh, I can't remember. How long you had it for? Um, almost a year. And actually, I've, I've had it for probably a year and a half, but I, I didn't go in there until probably six months after I, I started feeling stuff where were the it's so it's it's is it, it a stage, started in my neck is it sort of a stage four now it's all over the place yeah, yeah. It, all, every every one of my lymph nodes was inflamed okay and things are so, co cooling down a little bit yeah they're, they're going down but they're not going down as fast as he wants them to okay so. well keep keep going and that's I, I heard that one show where the guy was talking about uh he had it for like two years well there's different cell types of lymphoma yeah. And right? And some are very slow and indolent, and you can live for a long time without chemo. Some are very yeah. progressive and rapid and actually respond well to chemo, but will really harm you if you don't get them treated rapidly. Yeah. I, it it sounds like you're in some sort of intermediate cell type, so. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. All right, Mike. Alrighty. Good time, sir. Yep. Hey, uh, Drew. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that would have killed somebody 50 years ago, eventually. Uh, not eventually. Soon? Yeah. And is it curable now? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think the uh, I think the popular cons layman's consensus about cancer is we haven't beat it yet. Eight, so eighty nine percent of cancers are curable now. It's it's the solid tumors are not. I know there's but there's this feeling which is is cancer still on the menu? Yes. Have we figured out a cure for it? No. All right. So we've made no progress. Yeah. But the, the reality is we've made a lot of progress oh with god. it. Oh my god. All right. Uh, let's talk to Robin, who's 29 years old. Robin? Hi. Hey. Hi, guys. How's it going? Good. Um, I guess to put it in a question, my question is, is my flirting, my excessive flirting with my coworkers, a social problem? <laughs> are, you, are you married? <laughs> yes, I am. All right. What do you mean? I would never act out on any of them. You what? On, I would never act out. But you got to have that male attention. I do. Why? I crave it. I don't know. All right. Hold on. we got to take a break. Wow. Okay. We'll get to the bottom of uh, why you crave this male attention. I'm guessing it's got something to do with daddy. But, uh, again, just a guess. After this. Hey. Love line. I mean, I'm in mean, the great Spudini. And that is uh, Dr. Spoo over there. And the phone number, 1-800-LVE-191. Now, when we left off, we're going to Robin. Robin is 29. She's married, flirts at the office with the co-workers. She asked if it's a social problem. I don't quite understand what that question even means. I think she means, is it going to cause trouble with the co-workers? Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Meaning, are they going to think you're up to something more than you are, or they're going to get irritated by it? What do you mean? Um, yeah, are they going it's, to... It's unprofessional, I'm sure. What kind of environment do you work in? I work in the technical field. I'm a technician, and it's mostly men. I get along with the women as well. Hmm. What do you fix? 
what do I what do I fix? I tune filters for microwave communication radar guidance systems. Oh, ask her I about the, the fog. Yeah, what about cell phones? How does uh, how does cloud coverage affect cell phones? <laughs> I'm new in the field, so I'm not the one to ask. I tune the filters. I work in a lab. Hold on a second. How come there's not a chick alive that knows anything? <laughs> do you know what I mean? There just ain't one born that knows anything. How does that work? Even when people do stuff, they don't know anything. She tunes radio filters. I have a question. Drew and I were just talking off the air about uh, cell phones and if cloud coverage affects it. Don't all you idiots call up and tell, tell us the answer. We decided it did already. Now I'm really expecting some uh, definitive, uh, explanation. definitive explanation yeah. on this, and I get nothing. Robin? Yeah. How do you tune radio filters and not know the answer to this question? Well, they're not radio filters. They're radar systems. Mm. For what? Uh, for the military. Using microwave Airport. technology. But using yeah. microwave technology, yeah. right? Like I, cell phones. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, now, yeah. how does the cloud can, coverage affect that? How does that affect it? How do, I'm, I would imagine it would cause interference. Why would you imagine? Noise. Wouldn't you know that, though? <laughs> What? I'm new into the microwave field. Give her a break. All yeah, right. I didn't call for this. I know. No one calls for what they get on this show. That's <laughs> the beauty of it. So what's the question? The question is, is it inappropriate for yes. me to hang out as one of the guys and be involved in the guys' conversations and in the sexual connotations and be a woman? Well, listen, it, it depends. You know, I was just thinking, I'm going to, back to work on the man show. There's a bunch of women there who uh, are most all spoken for. And they hang out, and they uh, they uh, chew the cud with the guys. And there's plenty of plenty of that energy going around, and it doesn't amount to anything. It's just sort of a. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like piping in some music. Uh, people like at work. Does it mean mm-hmm. everyone dances? No, it just means it's kind of around, and it makes the uh, where it makes the place a little more lively, a little more enjoyable. But try to explain what it is you get out of it. Oh, I don't know. I like the attention. I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, most women do. So so you're willing... So even though the attention is around a discussion of material that you worry is not appropriate and you're really sort of not even into, right. just, just because it arouses guys and gets them directed at you, then it's okay. Think about how you compromise yourself when you do that. Just be careful. Where's Daddy? Where's Daddy? Mm-hmm. He's very present in my life. I'm Daddy's girl. You are? Mm-hmm. Hmm. He gave you enough attention... Um, yeah, I think so. I get plenty of it. Was he an alcoholic? No, not at all. Huh? Oh, heroin? No. <laughs> Ludes? Not at all. Rainbows, as he we say. He doesn't even drink alcohol. <laughs> I see. Doctor told me I had to stop. His liver was going to give out? <laughs> no, not at all. No. But you say you're daddy's girl. Yeah. Why? Um, <laughs> we just get along really well. I see. And uh, you guys spent a lot of time growing up together, you're around him and with him i wouldn't say a lot of time around him but he was a major influence in my life did you do you feel like you're trying to get his attention growing up though um probably always yeah sure hmm. that that's what i think this is coming from and was, was your dad uh busy with work or distracted somehow um always busy being the provider yeah being what being the provider right so he worked drove oh, yeah. what did he drive a truck oh no 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 what did he do aerospace Aerospace, so he, he he long hours kind of thing. Yeah, wrapped up in his work. Sure. And you you wanted the attention from him. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's what this is. It's a All remnant right. of that. I mean, so, you, bro- yeah. What's that? <laughs> I don't know what she was going to say. She's trying to get Daddy's attention, and now she tries to get Guy's attention. Right. All right. She's not acting on anything. It's fine. She likes women too, which is you know yeah says a lot. Hey, my. Uh, w- w- do you remember trying to get your parents' attention? You're just hoping they didn't bother you, right? Yeah, yeah. Hear them coming up the stairs. You pretend like you're asleep. Yeah. Pull the covers over your head, right? Sure. Put the chair in front of the door. Yeah. I think I had that myself. I we didn't have any stairs. Jessica? Yes? You're 19. Um, Adam, I just wanted to say, okay, I like this Italian guy. He's, like, totally gorgeous. And, Adam? Um, we went, you're talking like, to the great Spudini? <laughs> Yes. Um, we, like, went on our first date the other night. We just went over to his house last night. And I, like, I, th- I think he's totally gorgeous, but he, like, wanted to watch a porn with me. So I, like, watched a porn with him. First date? How did that work? What do you mean? I mean, well, how did I've we... been friends with him for, like, a long time. And, like, I liked him for a long time. But I, like, know if he liked me. He, like, came over and saw me a couple times. We never, like, did anything. Or we were just, like, really good friends. And then, like, I hadn't seen him for a while because I, like, had to go away and do some stuff. And so he, like... Breathe. Breathe, Jessica. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> um, um, and so I just... 
I don't want to know if like. Do you think that he's just trying to have I just sex? want to know how he came yes. up with this porn thing uh, out of the blue. I mean, and No, okay, well, he, we were like, we drank a little bit. Yeah, I was oh, going to okay. say booze. Okay. okay, and so we were just like sitting around and he's like... Did you have sex? No. Really? We didn't do anything. He just said, he, we were just like sitting there and we were actually at his friend's house and he was in bed and he's like, um, do you think I'm going to be, do you think that's weird if I ask you if you want to watch porn with me? And I'm like, no, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's weird. Who was in bed, the friend or yeah. him? No, his friend. He was in bed, but we, he was like, wait, he, they have, he has his own house. But it's, we like, it's weird, first date, huh? Yeah, but I like know him really well. He's like my really good friend. He's yeah, it's gorgeous. weird, though. He's what? Italian. Oh, oh, that explains it. Like, <laughs> Adam, of course. Of course. Yeah, the great Spudini comes from uh, Italian heritage. That's right. Look so. at Spudini's behavior. <laughs> dare you. Well, if that's exemplary of any Italian's behavior, that I could see how young Jessica could conclude that you, uh, all male Italians watch yeah, excessive that's porn. Too, is because he asked me to give him a back rub, and I like oh, didn't say anything. I just kind of clapped. Rub. And he, so yeah. I don't want him to think that I don't Jessica, like Jessica, look, okay, listen to me. First off, I don't know what you guys were doing watching porn and not making out. But number two... <laughs> well, I wanted to, but I don't want him to think I'm, like, slutty or anything. All right, here's the deal. I don't want to burst your bubble, but I don't think this guy's that into you. I think he's using you. What? I don't know if he's using you, but... I think he's a little ambivalent and not that into you. He's let's, go, he, oh, hold he's, on. Let, let, let's let's uh, Let the it. jury convene for a yeah. second. Uh, he's too prone to, to just putting all the cards out. You know what I mean? No, no right. Risk-free behavior. L look at it this way. When, fellas, guys or girls, close your eyes. Picture yourself going out on a date with someone you're really into as opposed to going out on a date with some uh, old girlfriend, someone you knew from high school, someone you've known for a while, someone you're maybe friends with. Maybe you have some feelings for her, but not really. Think about the difference. Think about washing the car. Think about getting the haircut, shaving, getting getting dressed, what you wear, the cologne you put on, the way you act. Let me open the door. I'll pay for that. You look lovely tonight. Mm -hmm. And think about your behavior when you're not really that into the person. Here's the reality. When you're trying to impress somebody, you don't say you want to watch porn. No. You're worried that that might turn them off. Right. But if you're not worried about what they think of you, yeah. then you just do what you want. Right. Pick your nose, break wind, go Dutch, whatever it is. Yep. There's a it. big difference between how you act, and guys will do that. Here's my other argument. He's known her for a long time and has never done anything. Mm. When a guy's really attracted to you or into you, he makes a move. You know it. Yeah. Let me just, uh, Jessica? Yeah. Yeah, why didn't, how long have you known him? Um, for like, um, two years. Mm-mm. Not good. Wait, and he hasn't, he didn't make a move yeah, before this. Yeah, he did make moves on me before, but I, like, didn't, like, let him do anything because, just because I didn't want him to think that I, like, I don't know, got around because I'm not, like, yeah. I'm into him. I'm really into him. Yeah, but he, he made he that. made a move like, uh, hey, like he, like, hand me like, that Mickey's big mouth and buy, oh, could you blow me? Yes, he didn't, exactly. he didn't, yes, he did. He yes. had to give him a blowjob. Yes. Oh. <laughs> there, thank you. Thank you. But the, he's one of those the guys. The great Spudini has <laughs> spoken. Of course. He's not that into you. He just isn't. Uh -oh. I'm sorry, baby. I but I, I you know what? I hey, I know, but guys always use me. I know. I have really big boobs, and I'm actually oh, not sorry. to be conceited. Hold on, baby. I'm pretty good looking, and right, but, I always get used for my body, and I don't want to be like that. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let's get back to them boobs. What size um, are they? I said that I have. What size? Really, I have really. What big size? Boobs. What size? Uh, thirty-six C. Thirty-six C. I'm five-five. I weigh one hundred twenty-five pounds. Solid. Solid. Blonde hair down to my waist. Yeah. Lies. Yeah. But oh, guys like me for my body, and they want to have sex with me, and I don't, I'm not like that. I'm not that kind of girl, and that's why I don't want to do anything with him, because I don't want him to think that. Okay, but listen, if he was into you as a girlfriend and not just as a conquest, he wouldn't have asked for the BJ. <laughs> you guys wouldn't have known each other for two years without him asking you out. He would ask you out on a date. He would try to impress you. Do you understand? Yes. He's not into you that oh. way. Once again, you've managed to find a guy... Who is not into you that way? Mm -hmm. So well, that was an asshole. So I think. Uh, there there go. Go. Bingo! All right. So your dad was an a hole. You, you already find a holes. You already know a holes. So why don't you try something other than an a hole? Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Twenty six. Hi. You have a yeah. uh, constant blue ball pain. Yeah, and uh, there was a dis discharge too. Okay. What kind of discharge? Uh, it was like a clear discharge. Actually, I went to the doctors and they took a culture, mm -hmm. and it. Um, they tested for STDs and mm -hmm. everything came back negative, but um, he said that in the culture for the uh, discharge, they found some white blood cells. So, dun, dun, dun. But they, he still, they still didn't know what it was. What's uh, wrong with the white blood cells? It just means inflammation. 
All right. Infection. All right. So I was going to use this as sort of a cliffhanger, but who cares? I mean, <laughs> you're answer. fine. I'll answer what you Well, fine. no, no, you're fine. It's complicated. Really? Yeah. Well, listen, come on. They found white blood cells, so he has an infection, so they gave him some antibiotics. Yeah, that didn't work, though. It's because he has epididymitis, and it keeps going. And so. Okay, but what's Drew going to tell you that the doctors aren't about telling ep- You can talk about it with epididymitis. All right. Is. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> Line. I'm the great Spudini. That is uh, my partner and accomplice over there. My assistant, Dr. Drew. Phone number, 1-800-LVE-191. Yes? Your scribe. Yes, my scribe. Uh, Squire, excuse me. Squire, Squire thank you. Uh, hand me my cape and uh, hat, please. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, look pretty. I think one of your fishnets has a run. I'm not done preening. Ryan? Yeah. You're 26? Yeah. Oh, speaking of preening. Oh. <laughs> I thought I might get you going with that one. Who was that? What was the name of that uh, critic that uh, tore me a new uh, a-hole? What was the name of that uh, fat F? <laughs> what was the name of that guy? Oh, big syndicated critic. What the hell? Oh, man. I can't think of his name, and he is uh, so lucky. But uh, listen, you fat homo. If you're uh, listening as we speak, uh, Monday, well... Uh, you're heading into your uh, dank office to uh, crank out another bad review that no one will read. Guess where I will be heading? In to start my third season of The Man Show, the show you love so much. Now, just don't you Thank think, you very don't you much. think he has a right to criticize whoever he pleases? Let, Absolutely. Let him, let him stew his own stuff. Don't worry. Absolutely. About it. But uh, they get personal. Well, Why can't we get personal? He didn't get personal. Really. He didn't get personal? Just called you Neanderthal. Called me Neanderthal, the uh, third evolution into uh, becoming a wolf man. I, 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 I somehow called me take... a pompous jackass and, and uh, called you an idiot, too. But I thought the part about having no showmanship was sort of a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Lacking showmanship, yes. If that ain't a buzzword for gay, I don't know what is. All right, Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, um, I've had like... A... Tom Shales. Uh... That is the uh, fat uh, feminine guy who uh, wrote that uh, horrible review. Thank you. Tom? I hope he at least did it uh, honestly. Who? Tom? You know, followed no. his own conscience with it. I'm sure he didn't. Go ahead, Ryan. Okay. Um, I've had a constant blue ball filling for the past. All right. Oh, you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you have the discharge and you have the uh-huh. white cells in there. And did yeah. they, what, what do they treat you with? Um, they gave me um, some doxycycline. Right. They thought it was a Right, that'll cover. No, they thought it was an STD, and they'll cover the chlamydia and whatnot with yeah. that. And that didn't work. And then um, did they give you an anti-inflammatory, like naproxen, Aleve, anything like that? No. Sometimes that's a little helpful. Sometimes also helpful to give you medicines that help the bladder evacuate more freely, like Hytron or Flomax. Although you're kind of young for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then if it doesn't clear up, uh, which it often doesn't, because this is probably epididymitis, which is an inflammation or infection of the little packaging plant that sits on top of the testes. They they commonly get infected. Prostate gets involved sometimes, too, with that. And it can take a long time to clear up. So you have to take antibiotics and or anti-inflammatories for an extended period of time sometimes. He gave me some um, Kypro, was was it? uh, Cipro. Cipro. Cipro? Yeah. Would that do it, or? That will help, but you're going to take it for a long time, probably. All right. Good times. Marcus? Yeah, hi. Hey, you're 15. What's up? Yeah, uh, I've got, like, I don't know if it's a social disorder or something, but, like, lately I feel like whenever I'm around people, I want to, like, beat someone's head in with a random object. Mm-hmm. With random people. I see. Yeah. All right. Well, somebody beat you up? Do you want me? To- Did somebody beat you up? No, never. never I've up. never. I'm a second degree black belt, but I've never lost a fight. Like, no, listen. First off, I kick your ass. <laughs> Second to clear your back belt. That don't mean ass to me. That's nonsense, all that karate BS with the hands down by the hips and the key eyes and all that there kind you of go. stuff. Yeah. Nonsense. All right, you're right-handed? Yeah. Your left hand is worthless. <laughs> that's that's karate. All right. Uh, did your dad, was your dad rough with you? I've, I haven't met my dad in like 11 years. Mm. That's, that's one of the things about not having a dad is having difficulty containing aggression. I see. Because you need a disciplinarian in the family? No, no one knows why. The, the presence of a male, the one consistent thing that comes out of literature about fatherless children is that they can't have trouble. Think of your jack-off friends, mm-hmm. the ones that didn't have dads. Well, they had dads. They just weren't around. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I know. No, you know what? They all had dads. They did. They just they were just wild. You know, my I mean, my friends were like uh, hyenas. Aggressive. Yeah, yeah, but not not in a malicious way, just in a rowdy way. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, anyway, Marcus. Yeah. Uh, I thought, by the way, when you got into martial arts, that you were supposed to learn, you know, respect and esteem. Yeah. And... Well, that all went down the crap hole. Pretty Why? Much. What did something happen recently? No. Nah, well, I don't know. I just don't like. I don't know. I had, I had like a drinking problem and stuff. Like, are, you, are you doing any speed or anything like that right no, now? No, I used to though. Uh, this may all be from whatever it is you've done to yourself. Yeah. Well, I used to like go through like a bottle, a quarter of tequila, like every two days. Oof. It's like fifteen? Yeah, fifteen. When did the start stop rather? When did it stop? Like yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, this could all be withdrawal. Yeah. Irritability from withdrawal. You, you got Marcus, you gotta see someone. Really? Oh, absolutely. Before you do really hurt yourself or someone else. Well, you, you can have a seizure, you can get DTs, you can be a mess here. I a really what size bottle of tequila? Like a quart. Like seven huge, seven fifty? I don't. I don't even know. I just grab one from my bar, and it would just be there. Like another bottle would be there, like a week later. So I drink that too. Well, now hold on, us. Hold on. First off, you said you went through a bottle every two days. Yeah. Who at your bar at your house? Yeah. Is replacing a bottle of tequila every few days? A lot of people. Like every. I used to live in a big house, and like everyone there was over twenty-one, but me. Why are we? We got a foster home or something? No, no, with my family. There's like seven of us in the house. Where'd you live at a TGI Fridays? <laughs> no, like with my mom and uh, my my cousins and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, was there uh, a lot of boozing going on? With my cousins, there was. Well, here's what I'm saying: if I'm living in a house and I'm replacing, uh, you know, twelve, fifteen dollar <sighs> bottle of tequila every three or four days, I'm starting to ask some questions. Like, who's drinking all the goddamn tequila? Nobody asked that question. Yeah, well, I would just be like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't feel good. I got a headache. I'm going to bed. And they'd be like, all right, whatever. All right. So what made you stop drinking? Uh, well, it wasn't so much. I, I had a bad, bad uh, LSD trip recently. Oh, boy. See, this is all, all drug-related, you're feeling, Mark. And you might do something yourself or other people. I, I used to cut myself a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, buddy. Listen, you got to start taking care of yourself now. Well, I'm you, trying. You need to talk to somebody. Well, you, what should got, he do? Uh, see a doctor. Any any healthcare, you got to get in touch with them. Well, well I've been through like five or six therapists, and they don't help. You know, what I'm yeah. Well, stay with it. Listen, Marcus, you don't have a choice. You really, you're going to hurt yourself or hurt someone else, and then when you hurt someone else, you'll hurt yourself because you'll end up in jail. Okay. All right. So listen, stop the substance abuse, and talk to a therapist. Get back in touch with that that side of you that worked that stuff out and what about the second degree black belt part what about all the discipline all the classes all the work all the sweat where'd that come from how do you do that and be an alcoholic at 15 yeah that's addiction you know I mean, it's all right well, like once, you, once you get back into your dojo and uh say hi to your shidoshi for me all right take those shoes what's off. a shidoshi hi shidoshi what is that hey hey shidoshi uh, okay that's a master well, the mo the mo the that's the Spudini of the uh, uh, of the uh, karate world. I see, or as I call it, karate. Thank you, Megan. Hi. Fifteen. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you needed to take like counseling for like repeated molestation. Yes, that would be a yes. Like even if you you're pretty much over it. There is no over it. And we were talking about this like last night, and I thought it was a good a good sort of analogy for people to help understand the profound effects that these traumatizing experiences have on you. Just think of a puppy dog that gets like the crap beat out of it several times. What's that dog going to be like now as it grows up? It's going to be aggressive and or withdrawn and pull away from people. And you could be loving and caring for that dog for the next 10 years, but it would frequently and probably always still kind of have that edge of an aggressive that been aggression that's been sort of inbred into the biology of that dog from its experiences. Same thing happens to people as it pertains to aggression, and the same thing happens as it pertains to sexuality. When kids are sexualized or or abused in this way, it has a profound effect, and you don't just deal with it. What happened to you? Well, since I was seven, I was been molested repeatedly by different guys. And it kind of stopped recently. Starting with who? Um, babysitter's nephew, I believe. Mm. And then going on to what guys? 
And then I'm um, going on to babysitters, has been, but different babysitter. Okay. And then dad's friend. Nice. Oh, yeah. What's uh, what's your dad like? Uh, dad's an ass. A uh, jerk. Yeah. What's he do? Work around metal? Mm, no clue. I haven't seen him since I was 13. I see. He's an alcoholic, drug Great. addict. Fantastic. Oh. And where uh, where's mom? Is she all right? Yeah, mom's good. She got a step? New, hu- new hubby? Yeah. Oh, really? How's he? He's good. I don't trust him. I, I don't really care. Well, he's cool and everything, but he's young. He's like about 11 years older than me. I see. 26. How old is she? She's 40-something. Yeah. Mm. Oh, boy. He's in so far over his head, he can't even see the light. Oh, my God. All right, Megan. Yes, you must get some help for this. Okay? Well, that's all right. It's uh, it's important. Well, the thing is, I haven't really told anybody because I was so little, I didn't know anything was wrong. And then right. as I got older, you know, I figured there was no point because nobody's going to get in trouble. Does your mom know? No. Well, it's not so much about getting revenge or retribution. It's about healing the trauma. And as I said, think of that dog that now lives in a loving family. It, it doesn't automatically uh, become okay. And those sorts of traumatic experiences affect your biology sometimes permanently or at least certainly profoundly yes and no amount of just sort of dealing with it is going to make that go away it takes a lot of treatment right. a lot of work she, you she don't just deal with that she should start by telling her mom and yep. then telling her mom she or, wants or, to get or some help counselor at school something like that all right uh, i want to talk to jack who's 16 jack yeah what's up uh well i'm gonna be going to a party this weekend where there's gonna be a lot of mushrooms and I've done a, like a little dose before it, but I'm thinking about doing like a whole eighth, which people are telling me is a whole lot. Yeah. And uh, why why are you thinking about doing so much? Well, uh, a friend eighth. of mine has said it's pretty Order. tight, and uh, trying to figure out my drug, my old uh, mushroom drug uh, weight thing. All right. All right. So uh, you're talking about doing an eighth ounce. That's right. All right. Uh, Look, can't remember how much that is. But any large dose. I don't dose, think that's that much. All my friends, they always say like, do a little under half an eighth. That'll be fine. What it, what now? What happened the first time you took the mushrooms? Well, I took about a quarter eighth, and uh, I watched Gladiator. <laughs> Good that was times. crazy. Yeah. Now, did you see Trails? Uh, yeah. So you yeah. did. You did kind of trip. Oh yeah. But you didn't just feel high. Oh yeah, I, w- I was going crazy. You were. Yeah. What, right, is, so, what does that mean, going crazy? Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't like barely noticeable or anything like a. It was really any different than anything I'd ever felt. Yeah, you could feel it. Oh, yeah. I mean, here's the thing about mushrooms. It, they're they're kind of hard to quantify. Mm-hmm. It's hard to tell because it's a bunch of, like, stems and heads and stuff. And it's hard to figure out how much you're taking. Yeah. You get a rough idea. And then they vary quite a bit in potency. So why don't you, uh, if you're going to do it, why don't you start light and, you know, see how you feel. Yeah, good advice. Because uh, let me tell you something. If you have a bad trip, you'll really freak out. Yeah. Yeah. I always kind of thought that was a bull. The bad, the bad trip thing? Yeah. No way, man. Yeah. I was just talking to my buddy, the Wheeze, about uh, his cousin who uh, spun out one night. And, I mean, I mean, like, you know, calling the cops and out in the street and chicks, you know. <laughs> They're I such wanna, yeah. lightweights. But, yeah, I mean, it, it can really spin you out. And, look, the, this Mushrooms is Mushrooms especially. I mean, you're, you can freak you out. You are profoundly altering a delicate chemistry in your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't Why do does it, it surprise you me. that it can go wrong? With high doses or regular doses or both? With anything, but high doses are obviously much more likely, yeah, and obviously. they're also more likely to cause permanent damage. But you don't, you don't really know what a high dose is exactly. I mean, you can, you can have a rough idea of it, but you never can fully tell, depending on what you ate, what kind of mood you're in, how powerful the mushrooms are. yeah, yeah. yeah. You you could you could come on to them and start freaking out and before you know it and, and at that point it's too late. Hey Adam, let me tell you something. Yeah, I miss the stories, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any more stories though. I'm only repeating old stories. Yeah, that's true. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Maybe you need to get but, off your ass and get new experiences. You know. I was thinking about stories for the show. I I was thinking about uh, experiencing things for myself, and then I thought, well, why don't I just pay as Waldo, who's already working on my house, to go out and have experiences for me, huh. come back and report them to me, and then nice. I could talk about them on the radio as if they were my own. Lower risk. Yeah. yeah. That way, I don't miss anything on TV, and I don't have to put yeah. my shoes on. Spudini. All right, Jack. Good, All right. Good times. So take it easy on your brain, there, buddy. Uh-huh. All right. It could All right. be it could be an interesting sort of sitcom, Spudini and Jack. Yeah. yeah. 
And the other sitcom we were working on last night, which was uh, Lung Baby. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to write these ideas down. Lung Baby is a, a baby that was conceived during oral sex, you see, and actually grew in the mother's lung, killing the mother and always feeling responsible. Do you know what I'm saying? Did you hear that Bruce Becker thing where his wife, or, yeah, was a former wife, is uh, alleging that she, or he's alleging that she impregnated herself by taking some semen in her mouth, putting it in a turkey baster, and then putting it in herself? Who's Bruce Becker? What, am I thinking of the right name? The tennis player? Oh, um, uh, 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 not, it's, uh, the German guy? Not, yeah, not, it's not Bruce. No, Br no, it's, uh, uh <laughs> Bjorn, Bor Bjorn, Bjorn, Boris Becker. Boris Becker, right. Go. Really? That's nice. Isn't that wild? You think... He, it's could, possible, right? Sure. It's an interesting scenario. Weston? Yeah. You're 17, what's up? Yeah, um, Adam, you're a great guy. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, how long do shrooms stay in your system? A few hours. How long? A few Are hours. Are just talking about this? Yeah. Oh, no, listen, you can, you can be going for about five, six hours. Yeah. But you're not gonna. You're gonna be under the effects of it for maybe a long time afterwards. But in your system, the, the people have a grave misconception about continued effect of a drug versus its residual effect from having it profoundly influenced your brain chemistry. Listen, you. If you take them at nine o'clock at night, you'll be uh, really uh, peaking probably about uh, ten thirty or something like that. Maybe an hour, hour and a half later, and you'll basically be high all night. Right, but I mean weed. Like stays in your system for like up to thirty days. No, not necessarily. But well, weed stays longer. Weed stayed in your in your fat for your, for your life, but in terms of measurable quantities, it's you know it's out in a week or so typically. Oh really? Yeah. Why? What are you doing? Well, no, I mean, I, I went to a party um, just last weekend, and we were we were all tripping out on shrooms, and wow. I was just wondering like. How long, like, they're going to stay in my system. Shrooms make a nice, big comeback. Oh, yeah, they are. Again, uh, my friends go out, my friends and I go out and pick them. Good times, buddy. I'm digging through cow pie? Yeah, we live in a farm town, so. Nice. But the, um, do you, again, do you actually get them out of the cow duke? Yeah, we uh, go out with shovels and turn them over. Oh, they underneath the cow crap? Yeah. I didn't know they grew underneath them. Yeah. How do they grow underneath? Don't they have to sort of sprout forth? Well, no. It, um, it's there's a real low tolerance of, of oxygen under there. So. And, and who and who put the first one in their mouth? Well, hold on a second. I don't well, know, listen. Go out and wash them first. Who ate the first uh, crab? You know. But but Wesson, so give me your theory again. Low oxygen. Yeah. Um, they're 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 a fungus, right? So, fungus um Oh, I don't, I don't okay, know. Okay, how's it going there, Wes? <laughs> how's biology going? Oh, I just thought that the mushroom looks like a mushroom, and any time I see a mushroom, on like the mushroom on the ground, they grow up and out. Right, but a, a lot of a lot of fungus don't they're, don't need a lot of oxygen. They're anaerobic. I know, right, but right, how right. do you flip the thing over and have it, how does it physically protrude upward when there's a cow load on it? It, it doesn't. It, does it go into the load? Yeah, it's, right. It's up into the crap. Yeah, yeah. So the head is in the cow crap. Now you expect this to look like an Alice in Wonderland mushroom? No, no. It does look like a mushroom. It looks like a mushroom. I think it's more like flat little. Yeah, that's all like stem, but there's heads on it, and it does kind of come up. Well, I've never seen one in a while. Anyway, Weston, uh, easy on your brain, buddy. All right. There's one last one. Yeah. How many of the Juggies have you actually had sex with? Fourteen. Really? Yep. I'm, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Good times. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and speak to uh, Michael. Michael? Yeah. Sixteen. What's up? Um, Not much. Uh, first off, I'd like to say, hey, Drew. Hey, Michael. I saw you about a year ago at uh, University of Illinois. Gave us oh, there. yeah. And... Uh, I'd like to say that was really cool. I was probably like the only high schooler. I was going to say that was mostly college kids. Yeah, and the and the thing, but uh, I would like to point out that uh, you know you're a funny guy, and uh, you know a lot of times the great Spudini steals a lot of your thunder. So you know, just let people know that. Oh, thanks, Michael. Yeah, yeah. He, he won't okay. be doing it. Hand me my cape. <laughs> yeah. Hand me my wand so I can make yes, Mike, yes, Michael sir. disappear. Your, your wand. Thank you. Okay. Anyways, my question is: I just recently started taking Celexis. 
because I got diagnosed with depression about mm, a week and a half ago. Uh -huh. um, basically, I moved out to uh, Eugene, where I'm living now, from Illinois. And, you know, just the whole move and trying to settle in and stuff, it's just been a lot of stress on me. And so I got diagnosed with depression. I'm starting to take it now, but just as I'm starting to take it also, um, I'm starting to fall in and, you know, make friends and go to parties and stuff. And, well... You know, I'm going to party, so I'm going to want to do some drinking. But, of course, I know that sure. there are certain antidepressants where drinking does not exactly mix. How about the mushrooms? No, <laughs> oh, don't do that. Uh, you're 16. You obviously shouldn't be drinking. There's no dangerous interaction with small amounts of alcohol in Celexa. Okay. Okay, because okay, I talked to some people. They said, like, ibutrin can cause, like, heart attacks and, and seizures and stuff. But I, I, Celexus will just increase the effects of alcohol. Well, it's just not a good idea to put them together, and sedation is part of it. All right. Wellbutrin he was talking about. Wellbutrin can cause seizures. We're going to take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll uh, talk to uh, Caitlin. Caitlin is uh, 17, has no feeling in her nipples. And as you know, Drew, I have sensitive nipples, and therefore the great Spudini enjoys some nipple play. You guys can make a great couple. All right. <laughs> yes, Jack Fratt and his uh, wife. We'll be back. Hey, it's the Love Line. I'm the great Spudini. That is my assistant and uh, partner, Dr. Drew, over there. Phone number, 1-800-LVE-191. I guess that actually be The Apprentice. Yeah, I'm still looking for the right word. Squire, ward, squire, squire assistant. Close. Okay. <laughs> Second. Caitlin? Hey. Hey. I'm 18, not 17. Good times. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's like the area around the nipple. It's not the nipple exactly. It's a circle thing around it that I have, like, no feeling in. Circle thing around it. Got it. Yeah. And also, it's... Do you like, need feeling in that part? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's completely numb. It's sort of weird. I was just making sure that it's okay. And, like, also, when I'm, like, having sex or, like, you know, doing it myself or whatever, mm -hmm. like, if as, long, as soon as there's penetration, I lose feeling in my clit. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I've heard of that. It's really weird. Like, I can't get both at the same time, and I lose yeah. all the Cosmo good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you look like? I'm short with brown hair. Yeah. I'm vertically challenged. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll drive over there for you. I don't mind that. Uh, I don't mind those little women. Hey, you said a couple of days ago that you wanted to just kick little people. We're like those little dogs. Yeah, I do feel that way about guys, really, but not so much women. Oh, no, no, no. Little women can be a pain in the ass, too. But little skinny women are a pain in the ass. Little people are like little dogs. So I'm they... voluptuous. I'll be okay. Are you? Okay. Not, yeah, not to the fat part, but just to the... You got some I got curves. The boobs. I got the boobs with no feeling. Yeah. What what size are you? 30, 40. Nice. All right. Well, you know, some women with larger breasts do have a little sensation problem, don't they? That's right. So I, I pretty much... I look at it as the radio being farther away from the tower, so the communication isn't quite as good. The signal's not as strong. The farther the nipple is away from the chest, the uh, less the sensation. Probably, I, I don't know this for a fact, but skin sensors are sort of a certain number per unit area. Mm -hmm. And as you stretch the skin out, that number remains the same. So the amount per unit area starts going down. But That's then wouldn't then fat people be less sensitive? Mm -hmm. And what about just big people? Just large people? Think, think about how much it, it hurt to get a shot when you're five years old as opposed to now. Same basic principle. Because uh, I've lost my will to live? That and the density of receptors. I see, we're spread out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll buy that. But it seems like big people, just like their noses, ears, and feet were in proportion, that their skin sensors would be in proportion to cover that uh, amount. I mean, their skin being an organ. But you'd have to assume that they start with more when they're little. Yeah, to anticipate the growth, and I don't think that's the case. Well, they, it, the skin sensors don't multiply as the skin. I don't think so. Stretches I, I, no, not so much. So are you say that we're all born with the same amount of skin sensors. I believe I. I believe and so that's that a true. a four hundred pound man theoretically would have less sensitive skin. I think that's true. Marginally less sensitive than a small person who's more condensed. I think that's true. Interesting, Caitlin. Uh -huh. Or some some something close to that, I believe, is true. All right, I'm so, sure. So there's not like a cancerous tumor in the way. No, 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 no. Why no. why does your why does your clitoris shut off when you have sex? I or? have no idea, so I can't I can't get the boasting. Like as soon as there's penetration, like the second 
that I have like that sensation, I lose the clit. Yeah, you got to sort of work on that. Maybe they, maybe the, there's some sort of vaginal shift or something that uh, goes to the opening and away from the clitoris. But yeah, I mean, it's like to the point where I could pierce my clit and I wouldn't even feel it, probably. Uh, if a guy was in you? Probably. You'd probably get a discount over at the piercing place. I think I just might. That might make some for some good, you know, porno things. Uh, nice pictures. I'll, I'll send them to you. Well, hold on a second. Uh-uh. You start to worry a little? Yeah. Should I get into a little line of questioning sure. here? Sure. Well, it's going to be something unusual. Okay. Whatever it is, it's not going to be the usual line of Caitlin? questioning. Caitlin? Yeah? Parents hippies? No, 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 no. I was just kidding. Sexual abuse? No. Oh, no, it's going to be something very weird. Unusual. I was totally just Lots kidding. Lots of moving. Moving. Moved around a lot as a child? No. Big family? <laughs> no, I'm only a child. Mm-hmm. Aha! <laughs> Aha, the spoiled brat. All right. All right. Uh, you're all right? Everything's good? No, yeah, everything's fine. I was totally right, I promise. No, it's good times. No hey, baby, I believe you. Okay. Yeah, you sound you sound very adjusted, doesn't she? Yeah. Okay, baby. All right, good. Yeah, you're all right. You, yeah. Get yourself a nice boyfriend. Work it out. Okay. All right, Toots. Okay. All right. Thanks. Take care. All right. Aaron. Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Um, My question is, I put my clitoris under running water to get off. Well, hang on a second. Spudini. Yes. Is that sort of a detachable instrument or some type? That, yes. Uh, yes. That's right. She's in the, oftentimes, in the next room. Right. She puts, <laughs> it, run, studying, puts it in running studying water. Studying the Bible. Yes. All right, so you, you put your uh, clitoris under running water. Yes. And it gets me off. I see. And my first question was, I, want, I would go halfway through the day and my underwear would be wet from the water and discharge, obviously, throughout the day. And I was wondering, first of all, is that, if that was unhealthy. So you get you get in the tub, right? You spread your legs, right? You let the water run on you. Uh huh. Mm, fills up. It would make sense that it fills up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, but it should come back out right away. Yeah, when you stand up, it should come out. But you know, sometimes when you've been swimming, you're like driving home, and you do that thing with your ear, and there's a little water in there. Mm-hmm. You do that thing where you, yeah. you bonk the side of your yeah, ass, and a little yeah. water comes out of your vagina. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's. Well, that's like you with the uh, jacuzzi jets. That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's where I first figured that out. That's right. Oh, you're Adam. You, wait, you, you figured it out at a jacuzzi? Mm-hmm. Or not Adam's jacuzzi? Uh, Spudini's. I figured it out. Well, I figured it out at a jacuzzi. Not because of Spudini's jacuzzi stories, though. No, oh, I've okay. never listened to Love Line before. I just happened to be driving home tonight. And How dare you? Yeah. Anyways, but my other question. All right. No, let's, let's talk I to I didn't you. like her response to that. Hey, it's new, uh, a new listener. Why not? I listen? don't like new. I like new. I like old. I want to speak with her. Erin? Yeah? Your other question? Um, I have had a boyfriend for over a year, and we had tons of sex. Like, I love sex. And then ever since I've been doing this, I've been totally disinterested in having sex with him. Mm. And I love having sex. I love love. But this gets me off way more than sex. Yeah, but that's not love, is it? No. And that's why I want to know. Like, I mean... Well, is that sex never going to be as good as that? I'm waiting for him to be, like, as good as I get off. We would suspect that you're not into this guy as much as you might think you are. That might be the reason why I am not yeah. to have sex with him. Yeah, longer. it's more it, it, that the physical sensation is sort of a good reason to divert yourself, but the reality is you're just not invested in this guy. And a, a woman's vagina will tell her whether she's into a guy or not. Oh, it's like a divining rod. Yes. Yeah. The vagina will do the talking for her. You know what the vagina sounds like? Sounds like the uh, ferret from the Budweiser ad. I thought it would be like more like Senor Wences. I'm in love with him, Mr. Vagina, aren't you? No! It's no good! But he's so dreamy. I don't like him! But he's tall. He has a job. The vagina has spoken! Well, I'm going to go on another date. Is that okay? No, it's not all right! It's all right? No. It's not all right? It's all right. It's all right? It's not all right. You find a new man. Um, but I like him. No. Then the vagina spoken is the last word. You want the yeast infection? I will summon one. Mm! No, 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 no. No, no. How about the nice urinary tract infection? <laughs> no, no. It's okay. It's okay. I'll dump him. That's right. You will. Okay. <laughs> the vagina is spoken. That that uh, you you show me a woman who says, "I like this guy, but when is the sex going to be as good as when I'm in the tub?" 
She doesn't like the guy. I'll show you either a screwed up woman or a guy, or yeah. girl doesn't like the guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was a little angry. Well, you know, if she hadn't just so quickly gone to, you're right, I don't like this guy, we would have gone down that line of thinking. Jason? Yeah? You're, uh, you're, uh, 30. That's right. What's up? Great Spoodini, I'm humbled by your presence. Uh, that is all right. Hold on, the vagina wants to say something. <laughs> Thank you. It's all right. What's up, Jason? Uh, not a lot. Uh, I just wanted to tell you about that I have a lot of respect for you. I've called a couple times before, and you've helped me out. Oh, um, good. Thanks. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, I just wanted to know, um, I'm thinking about going into recovery, and I was wondering about what kind of a sponsor I should choose. Um, I've been uh, probably a marijuana addict for about eight years. I was going to say, I can hear the laugh when yeah. you're just sort of giggling. Yeah. All right. Um, anyway, and... Uh, Actually, are you, you've been off it recently? What's that? You've been off pot recently for a while? No, are you kidding me? You're I still doing it. Right bowls earlier. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. What is that? The... But, um, but also, Jason, one of these guys who smokes so much weed, he's become proficient high. Yeah, but oh, it's, it's like absolutely. marijuana prevents you from completing your laugh. It's like, <laughs> you can't quite. There's no follow up. Yeah, no laugh. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of one of the uh, high IQ yeah. Yeah. donors that you guys were talking about. Right. Before, I mean, I scored 1310 on my SATs. So. Nice. All right, um, what's up? Anyway, um, I just wondered, um, I'm also. I'm also. Uh, Gay, and I think I may be somewhat of a sex addict, and yeah. I wondered if I should choose a sponsor who is, or maybe well, if it matters, or it shouldn't really matter, frankly. Uh, sex addiction is a very common part of addiction in general, and it's a difficult thing to treat when it's a prominent part of your addictive process, and it's something that needs specialized attention. Uh huh. Start with though, just a good sponsor in recovery, MA. Somebody's got at least five years under their belt. If you want someone who's gay, that that's fine. It's, it's it helps sort of um, give you a, an opportunity for connection on issues that other that straight guys may not quite understand. Yeah, like really. a, like a BJ. Well, but that's <laughs> but that's that's the problem is that if you are a sex addict and if that other person's recovery is not intact, there could be some boundary issues and uh, you gotta be careful. Just get somebody that's had, got a long right. time in sobriety and well, then maybe I mean, go to some essay meetings also and get a sponsor in in sex addiction recovery. Jason, I feel, yeah. I feel like sometimes um, I really, you know, kind of endanger myself because I tend to get yeah. really high, you know, and then I'll go do something and I'm afraid that I'm going to, you know, I, cause I, suspect, I, I, I practice strict, you know, safe yeah, sex, so I'm I listen, afraid that I'm going to slip. So. I just suspect you get involved in, any, in just a addiction recovery and the addictive sex will also settle down. Jason is one of these guys, you know, I have this theory about sort of brain power yeah. and IQ being... Um, Almost like the engine, and uh, oftentimes cars go off the road and they get caught in a drainage ditch or in a mire, and you need a lot of torque and horsepower to sort of pull yourself out, even if you're knee deep in it. Yeah. And guys like Jason, even though he has addiction, even though he has some difficulty, has a sort of base of intelligence that will help him eventually get help and get his life straight. Hopefully. I do believe. Sometimes the addiction is more po more more powerful than the brain. I think Jason, who's an intelligent guy, I can hear it, is asking the right questions and gonna gonna get himself some help and gonna get himself out of the mire. All right, we will uh take ourselves a little break. Uh I'm gonna urinate, Drew. Would you would you like to watch? Well it's Spudini. Someone has to hold uh the last time the great Spudini urinated, he peed on his cape because someone was not paying attention holding it out of the way. I'll try better this time, sir. Thank you. Bip. Bip. Love line. Adam Corolla, Dr. Drew over there. Let's uh hop on the phones and speak to a uh, young uh uh. -oh. Three. Oh, yeah. It's a great spoodini. Thank you. Oops. Oh, I see. Was that me? Yeah. yeah. Ted. Ted. Caller goes... Oh. Oh, oh there you are. Oh, yeah. Too bad. Okay. We thought you were sleeping. Um, my, um, me and my girlfriend, we've been together two years, and she's a virgin, and we've been trying, and it's just too big for her, I guess. You guess? Yeah. What happens when you try? Well... We use lubricant and everything, and when I try to put it in, she just says it hurts too much. Well, that's not a size issue, right? Because you never even get it in. Yeah. Well, I get well it if you can never get it in, it's a size thing. Hey, do you have a big penis? Yeah. All right. Well, hold on. I have her uh, vagina on the other line. 
Oh, no. No! No, I won't do it! No, get it away from me! No! No, no! No! Take it back! Take it back! Don't try it! Take it! Put it back in the underpants! I'm sorry, Ted. Her vagina is uh, not a big fan of your penis. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm 36. <laughs> vagina. <laughs> hey, are you, uh, she, you a big guy? No, actually, I'm 5'8", uh, and I weigh 110 pounds. 5'8", 110? Mm-hmm. With a huge dork? Yep. That is awesome. And that makes it look even bigger. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yes, it does. It does. Hey, you know, remember... Spudini, settle down. This, no, I, what I'm saying is, you take a six-year-old kid and put him in his dad's wingtips. <laughs> right? They look huge. Look huge. What if, even if dad has a small foot, you put that six-year-old in those big shoes, what's he looking like? Huge. Huge. There you go. All right. Ted? Yeah? Is your girlfriend a big gal? Uh, no. What's she coming in at? She's, um, five, eight, and... I think 115 pounds, 130. So she's a few inches taller than you? Um, no, he's 5'8". Five, five, or they said 5'6". Five, same five, same five, size, six. I believe. All right. And she's a couple inches taller. Listen, Ted. Yeah. Uh, how about some lubrication? I've tried that. How about the fact that she's not ready? And this is just a spasm of the muscles down there because of her anxiety and ambivalence about doing this act with you. Huh. And that's the most common reason that women have pain with penetration is that they're either having vaginismus, which can be sort of a chronic recurrent problem, some of that's caused by a reflex spinal Wait mechanism. How old is she? She's 19. Mm-hmm. All right. Why is she still a virgin? I have no idea. The, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? You never asked her that? Um, no. Well, maybe there's something up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is she ever traumatized? Um, I believe I heard her mom. You know what? Uh, uh, uh. No. 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 Don't believe it? No. This is, I just want to call about a big penis. You really? Well, well, let's hear what you say about the mom. You, I'll bet you. Uh, yeah, watch. Right. You believe you heard her mom say what? Say that her uncle uh, molested her or something. Oh, yeah. Sure. sure. Just yeah. uh, betwe- between uh, house school and pass the potatoes? Huh? When did she, your, when, when did you believe you heard your mom, her mom mention that? Um, when I was down at her house in San Diego. Uh, what were you doing at the time? Um, well, Ash, or my girlfriend was at... Um, School and uh, no, during when this con- yeah when this conversation occurred, um, I was um, it was uh, breakfast with her mom, you know, just you know we were just having breakfast and um, how did it come up? Um, well, basically she asked if we ever tried it, and you know I kind of denied, you know. <laughs> and she talked about her uncle molesting her. Yeah. I sort of believe it in a in a retarded way. Although Ted's doing a great job not selling it. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. No. I could crack him. Really? Yeah. All right. You were. When was this here in San Diego? Huh? When were we in San Diego? Oh, this was a um, few um, months ago. Uh, uh, a few months ago. Hey, Ted, answer the questions quickly. Here we go. And Ready she to was. Go. And she was in school. Yes, she was. Where she in school? She goes to Metro. Uh, it's a special school, I guess. I don't know. A high school? No, it's a um, kind of a college. It's and a special college? Yeah. For what? Um, okay, both her and I have uh, muscle problems. And um, she didn't get the same education as I was. Uh, I guess she's a little slower than me, a little. What's the muscle problem? Uh, muscle dystrophy. Is it myotonic dystrophy? Um, oh, I'm not sure. All right, mm-hmm. listen, I believe him. Mm-hmm. Where did he come up with muscular problems? Mm-hmm. Ted? I have a congenital muscle myopathy. I understand. He's some sort of muscular I'm dystrophy. With you. I, I'm, different... I'm sorry it was aggravated by Drew's verbal assault. I was with you all the way. And uh, so was uh, Miss Vagina. Yes, I was. I said, Ted? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe the fact that her uncle molested her, and I know her mom just mentioned it in passing. Mm-hmm. You uh, and she said, like, uh, you want your uh, eggs uh, basted or over easy? And oh, uh, yeah, there might be some molestation, Uncle. Uh, that's probably what's causing the trouble. All right, all right, and and it's emotional thing for her, and it's like what Drew said; she's having a little of that uh, vaginal spasm thing there. You got to just take it slow and be reassuring. She has to be relaxed. 
right? Yeah. Hmm. She has she has muscle problems. Yeah, what kind of muscle dystrophy? Yeah. Why the hell is he coming up with that? I don't know. What what did you see? He said Metro School. Yeah. He said it was a special school. Yeah. 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 All right. Said they have muscle problems. He then went into his uh, his his specific type. All right. How dare you, Drew? Mm. This uh, poor lad with a large penis is on death's doorstep. No, he's not. And, uh, how dare you attack this? He's he's, he's oh. he suffers from uh, MD. Muscular dystrophy. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I wonder if he has McArdle's disease or something like that. Jeffrey. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, here's the deal. Well. While I'm in bed, like when I'm still asleep, and I'm not know nothing, and all of a sudden I wake up and I've got like stuff all over my underwear. <sighs> Masturbate all my, I don't know. It just kind of sucks. Well, why don't I believe anybody tonight? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's, getting it's just too bizarre. You're 19. Yeah. And you wake up with stuff on your underwear. Yep. And is it your stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, like at night when I'm about shoot about two o'clock in the morning, two between two and three, about once or twice a week, I wake up and I get like this stuff on my uh-huh. underwear, uh-huh, and yeah. I don't even know. I mean, I don't even know when I do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I well, wake up with it. yeah, but maybe you're having a, wet what dream. they call a wet dream there, nocturnal no, emission. Yeah, but I'm not dreaming. I'm not dreaming. Yeah, nothing. but that's the way it, you don't remember the dream, but you're having something going on. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah it's God giving you a hand job. <laughs> All right, dude. Adam, you rock, man. Hey, listen, why don't you whack off before you go to bed? Okay. What do you just. just he doesn't know how okay. to do that. Yeah, no, 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 listen. Uh, Toothbrush. Yeah, I use a uh, thumb and uh, well, what my two favorite fingers, and I, I give it a little lick, like uh, you'd see. Uh, well, before Bart Starr threw a pass, you'd see him do that thing. Uh, a little, gets, a, uh, gets a little grip on the ball. All right. Yeah, you masturbate, Jeffrey. Okay. Uh, you're 19. Did I have to tell you about that? Yeah, I, was, I just started like about two months ago. All right there, buddy. Yeah. Well, your body's sort of gotten ahead of your brain. Hey, uh, yeah. speaking of your brain, what are you doing? Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm just sitting here in bed just are you talking in, to you guys. Are you in school? Um, No, I'm done. Done with school. Yeah, yeah what I just you, got done. What are you off to now? Um, college. Where? Um, uh, it's called, uh, it's down in Portland. It's called University. Junior Junior College. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a Junior Junior College. So yeah. Pre, it's called Pre-Junior College. Pre-Junior College? Yeah. It's a Junior College prep program? Yeah. All right, buddy. Start it, yeah. All right, have fun over there. All right, man. You uh, yeah, s- smoke a lot of cigarettes, hang out the snack shack, see if you can score some weed. All right. Buddy. All right. Good times. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you what goes on at that junior college. <sighs> Nothing. Bunch of white people shouldn't be allowed to go to junior college. <laughs> Why? Why? Because the only cultures that really use the junior college are uh, the Asians and uh, some of the other country. Some of their cultures are coming to this country to make a better life for themselves. I see. The white folk, black folk, half the Mexican folk, they don't really use it. I see. It's only it's only the ones who came here. You know why? Why? Because they should have been going to regular college. They just moved here. Mm, I see. They didn't have the money. They didn't have, you know, sometimes the, the uh, records and things right. like that, transferring and all that. They'll be off at a regular college in a matter of months. White people should not be allowed <laughs> to go to junior college. Okay, Adam. Think about it. Yeah, I'm thinking. You've never been to junior college. You'd, no. be, you'd be appalled if you saw what didn't go on over there. Mm. All the white people just sit The Asians, they were doing so. They were going somewhere. White people just sat around, scored weed, sat around and complained about the man. Say, ate granola bars. Nothing. I'm telling you. Chris? Yeah. You're uh, 17. What's up? Well, I, u- I used to have the class right before lunch, but it was English class, and I was really attracted to my teacher, and I just get erected in class and I couldn't I can't ever control it yeah mm, you're 17 and it gets to the point where I'd have to go home at lunch and masturbate before I came back to school sure nice. you're forced to you had no choice <laughs> no I didn't <laughs> what are you gonna do your jack's up against the wall so very punny tonight I don't mm. know if you noticed that true not but funny just, punny I'm always getting erections and I can't control them I just yeah why don't you you wearing Levi's no, I wear baggy jeans. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, wear tighter tighter pants and double down on the underpants. And when you get an erection, 
<clears throat> lift it up and put it against your belly. It'll kill it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I gotta do that sometimes. Listen, I haven't given this speech in a couple of days, but Drew, an erection starts out hanging down toward the ground, starts to move up, meets some resistance, which are your genes in <laughs> class, begins pushing against them. Like, uh, you ever see animals in the wild, like a rhino scratching itself against a tree stump? Starts leaning on it well, real the, the hard. The erection is caused by a, a, a increased inflow. So if any pressure decreases that inflow, it can kill the erection. You take the penis, and instead of having it push up against the pants, reach down, quick move, boom, it's a Slim Jim move. It's like breaking into a car. Pow, against the belly, and then it begins draining into the sack. Mm. All right, we'll be back. Yep, yep, there you have it. Another fabulous love line uh, in the can, as uh, we like to say. Yeah, Drew? Jennifer Blanc on Sunday? Yeah, what day is it? Today's, I was thinking it was Thursday, but it's Wednesday. There you go, good times, buddy. All right, so, until next time, this is Spudini <laughs> for Dr. Drew. Say mahalo. <laughs>